Okay, now recording is on. Awesome. So basically, this is the page, and it's already available on our website. Um, I hope you had a chance already to take a look at that. If not, I'll just quickly go through it. So the introduction, as I said, so that was uh, the project which started in preparation for my presentation at Oscarcraft AppSec. So uh, they, and as stated in the intro, I will go through the main steps of establishment of such a security champions program. And in order to go for it, and in order to actually talking about such program, we first have to define what are the champions. So surprisingly, on OWASP, there was already such um, such an article, or unsurprisingly, let's say. So um, according to the definition, security champions are active members of a team uh, that may help to make decisions when it comes uh, to security in general. And they are act as the core element of security assurance process within the product or the service. So in my opinion, when we talk about the champions, it's uh, several uh, things, which several problems which help uh, they help to solve. So they help to scale security. They help to engage other people within the teams. And by that, they help to establish the security culture. So when we say that there is a security champion in certain team, it means that first there is a contact. So whatever a problem in, uh, in a product there is, there is that person, and this is the champion who will help to at least report it, or probably even to mitigate that, as well as uh, he or she would uh, study, would grow the competence, becoming the security expert within the team, and will help to pass on that knowledge. So there, are, it is quite clear that uh, that um, approach might help to solve certain problems. But we need to understand that this is not a silver bullet, and this is one of the parts of the overall security strategy, which might help to get closer uh, to successful completion of it. Well, it can't be very complete all the time. Um, it's rather to uh, improve your security within the organization. Um, so let me go quickly through the steps, and then probably we can go uh, straight to the questions. I hope you'll have some. So. So as we said, so security champions are such people within the teams, and we are not talking about the number of such teams. So let's say there are 10. They write uh, code in different languages. We just want it to, to make it work. So in all of these teams, there are such persons, and we can work with them as a meta team. So the main six steps are outlined in the diagram, which is available here. And we can go through each of that steps one by one. So namely, these steps are we have to identify the teams, we have to define their role and know what we want to have for the champions. Then we obviously have to nominate them, setting up communication channels, building knowledge base, and maintaining interest. It sounds quite simple, although if you miss any of the steps, it will probably not work or will make your life much harder. So let me just open. Um, let me just open that link and show you the step number one. So when starting from identifying the teams, we are talking about someone who just started the work in, in a company. So let's say if I just came to yours and I need to map out what are the services, what is the current state of security and so on and so forth, that would be kind of a high level audit. So the outcome of the exercise of uh, asking typical questions such as how many teams are there, what are the technologies, <coughs> excuse me, uh, what is the race calendar, and so on and so forth. The outcome might be such um, a table which would include everything what we are we're talking about. So we know who is the product manager, we know how often they actually release, we know who is the team lead, we know if there is any security contact, and so on. So that will be the first step which will help us in the future and which we will maintain and include our security champion in there. So that sounds actually quite logical and quite simple, but this is obviously quite important to have that. Um, once we identify that and once we know how the things are working more or less in the company, we need also to, to define the role. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, I will talk a bit more quieter. <clears throat> so, um, 
Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Now it's better. Um, so defining the role is uh, related to your um, strategy. So I hope you heard about uh, open sum or similar frameworks. So in order to define the role of the champion, so to say what exactly the champion should be doing, there is no a direct answer. It's rather it is related to what you are planning to achieve in the midterm. So you don't necessarily have to use exactly open sum, although it is open and it is from OWASP, so I can suggest it for sure. So um, once you assess the security level within the organizations and within the teams, you um, set up certain goals, let's say for the next half a year, and you can adjust uh, these uh, strategic goals to the goals which you want to be achieved with the help of the champions. So you define the role by having those specific goals of the strategy and it will be changing for, with time. So there are several typical goals which might include, let's say, conducting and verifying security reviews within the team, which would help to guard and promote best practices, to raise the risks, to build threat models, and so on and so forth. So this year there was a, um, a WASP Summit 2017 and uh, one of the sessions was dedicated to security champions. So let me just click here, I will quickly show it. That was actually such a hot topic. So we interviewed 20 respondents from different companies and their roles included architects, consultants, and management and Depth. So, in fact, that was as distributed as possible. And we asked several questions, including what are the typical activities, and seven more yes, no, like are they expected to share knowledge, are they expected to build threat models, and so on. So, if you see at the outcomes, and I, I also would like to encourage you to open the page yourself after, you will see that the distribution is not even. So, some people, let's say, um, expect them to conduct internal reviews, and whereas half of them not. Although it is quite clear that majority would like them to sh uh, to share the knowledge and to be part of the education and building the security culture for for the organization. So, as you can see, it's not very easy to say what exactly they have to do. But I believe that the most important that it is related to what you want to achieve again. So you obviously we want to have uh, security everywhere. It's not possible. So when we are realistic, when we say that, okay, for the next, uh, let's say half year, uh, you know, quarter or year or whatever, if we want everything, let's say to have uh, at least some automation, if we want at least to have threat models and know what our problems there, if we want to have security reviews and so on and so forth, that could be already such a goal for the champion, which is easily measurable and which is, which can definitely be achieved with help of said champions. So by now we mapped what are our um, <clears throat> teams and we defined the role of the champion. So we know what we want to ask from them. The next step would be to nominate them. So it is a very important word, nominate. So we do not just go and say, hey, you're a champion but we actually want them uh, to want to be a champion. So we try to motivate them and to show the benefits. So um, I wrote down some of them. So it is interesting that um, this is probably the point where people might be the most critical saying, hey, not many people actually want to have additional work and why would somebody want to be a champion? So, uh, for me, I found out that many people actually want their product to be of high quality, to be secure, and to actually doing things right, but it is not a priority and they do not have time for it. So for them, it was the official way on how to make the products more secure. Apart from that, there are such benefits as self-development and ability to look at things differently. So I spoke to one developer who worked 15 years and he was really a brilliant guy. And he said that he just wanted to try and once he did, he started to be a promoter of security champions himself since it was completely different. So he knew how to write the code, some always proper, well, often properly 
anyway, he knew a lot of algorithms, he knew how to build stuff, but he just was not thinking about breaking the stuff in this way. So that helped him himself and opened such a new perspective. Um, it, of course, increases the value of the developer on the market. It helps to improve the quality of the product. It, and there are some additional things, such as you can attend to your conferences, you get some, I don't know, free stuff, <laughs> you have fun, and you become a part of security team, which actually makes uh, the change. Um, so once we nominate, of course, we have to support them further. So we can add them to security contact for our table in the phase one, and we can buy some mugs, something like that, for example. It actually works quite well. Okay, once we nominated them, the next point, it's quite short, but still very important, to set up communication channels. So the rule here to be a, to have them as many as possible, although it can work even with just one. It could be your private Slack, it could be Keybase team if you use them, it could be mailing list or whatever. What you want to achieve here as the leader of the Champions program is that uh, you get the feedback, you know what is not going right, and you can adjust your program according to uh, the feedback you hear from the Champions. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> uh, step number five is building solid knowledge base. So to say it short, we want our internal knowledge base to be the primary point of knowledge for the champions and actually for everybody within the company. There are, of course, many different um, resources all over the internet. Not all of them are, let's say, consistent. So one can be quite contradictory to another. Sometimes you can just open Stack Overflow and find out that, let's say, not always the suggestions are the best from security perspective. So it is recommended to add there at least the basic stuff, such as uh, what are the recommended crypto algorithms, what are the best practices which you promote, as well as several checklists. So I found them quite efficient when there is a new person who never had any contact with security and who wants to start doing such stuff. So the checklist will help him to have that skeleton of the future review, will help to look at things differently and to help uh, working on the threat models as well as to gain the knowledge. If you do not have yet your internal knowledge base at all, and you still want to start, obviously it's quite a tedious task. In order to help you, there are several projects which are open source and which can help to start with and to boost your um, internal database further. And they include uh, such projects as Security Knowledge Framework, which is from OWASP, ASS, and MSDS, which are for web apps and for mobile apps uh, correspondingly, as well as uh, industry best practices such as SARS, for example, or to be presented as or whatever. So <clears throat> after that, and it it is not necessarily have to be here. I mean, you can start obviously earlier, but at least here you should already have that knowledge base so the champions can refer to and can learn from there as well. And then the final step here would be to maintain the interest. So we want them to be motivated. Uh, so one of the most important pillars of having champions is to have their enthusiasm. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so this is only limited by your imagination, in fact. There are several um, advices on what you could do there. So it could include different workshops and trainings. So you can organize a quiz, you can have a month of bugs internally. Um, you can, so at our company, for example, we have such thing which is called the SLK. So once per uh, Thursday, usually be weekly or uh, once in three weeks, it depends. We gather uh, internally, we discuss some topics. There is one guy who could present kind of Latin talk. We have beer and pizza and it's quite um, informal. But at the same time, people are quite happy to well, have free beer and pizza, obviously. But at the same time, this is the way how they also learn and how new ideas are shared. So in my opinion, that's actually quite cool. And I like it very much. And from what I heard, champions also do like it. Um, other stuff might be regular newsletters. So for example, we use Ezin, which is uh, an upset compilation. So if we just open it here. Um, 
let me open, for example, the one from the last week. I think it was one and six. So it looks more or less like that. Uh, you have different sections like must see, and it tells you about some vulnerabilities. You have hack, and you have some techniques of how you could exploit that. And you have uh, some news about different security issues and some fun, which is just, well, as it comes from the name, it's just some funny examples of the security files. So uh, we send them once per week, and we get a lot of um, quite positive feedback about it. So we uh, try to continue it as well with our internal news, and we include that also in monthly new newsletters. So it includes updates from the teams, it includes our plans and recognitions, and it's a good checkpoint plus for the champions. So they see what they have done and what are our plans for the next time, and for ourselves as central security team. So we know what, where we are going, and we can also trace on how did we, how well did, did we go. Um, there is also a special place in the internal wiki where it could be things as conference calendar, the library. There could be, for example, also a place for the feedback and for ideas, and slides from attended conferences when the champions traveled there. Last but not least, of course, there are um, meetings not just internal, and we also organize a lot of meetings. So that's another thing which can help to motivate people and to share the knowledge even further. As an afterward, <coughs> um, it's cool to have that program. It's cool to scale the security and to talk about um, security culture, which is, again, quite a complex thing. And it is not achievable by just following the steps, but it is approaching you there. And personally, uh, for myself, I found it out quite cool, not just from the perspective of achieving those goals, but of the environment which you create and which you work with. So after some time, I found out that it's not just me telling about basic vulnerabilities about what is XSS or why, for example, we have to do that or not to do that. But I started to learn from the champions myself. So it's quite often when they come with some complex case and we sit together, and this is the way how we push forward security for ourselves. So that would be my closing words for for the small uh, demo of the project. And uh, I will be happy to hear and answer your questions now. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Can you hear us? Yes, I do. Perfect. Um, why did you go with it to the GitHub document? Would you like others to cooperate on the text? Uh, yes. So as I wrote here in the afterword, um, you can come to the same uh, result probably by different other ways. And I would be happy to hear the feedback from the others. So if you believe that something doesn't work or didn't work for you, or you achieve the same with different results, you can just comment as an issue or create a pull request. And I would definitely include it there. So although I found this what worked for me, I also believe that it's probably not working for somebody else. And I want it to be more universal. So if there are any other techniques and you believe that something works the best, I will be really happy to hear that and include in the in the playbook. Mm -hmm. What what were the what was the feedback so far? <clears throat> so <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> so so far, I heard quite positive feedback. So I, I had uh, uh, that presentation on OWASP up second book rest, as well as on Zero Nights in Moscow. And there were many people who either tried similar, and they also confirmed that the steps were the same, or they were willing to try, and I didn't hear their feedback yet. But I, when, when I was composing that, a couple of guys also advised me on, for example, how to also have that motivation, as well as the creator of the first presentation, Dennis Cruz, who did one for Security Champions, 1.0 also gave some advice, but overall they all agreed, and so so far the feedback was quite positive. Mm -hmm. So now I ask uh, our audience what questions we have to the creator of the playbook, guys. 
any activity? Hi, it's uh, Gergely from Budapest. Uh, how do you find uh, like uh, you mentioned the mug to motivate the security champions? What are are other ways? Maybe you give them special training or or uh, celebrate them somehow. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, and thanks for the question. So yeah, obviously MAGA is not <laughs> the only and not the most important thing. It was just an example. So uh, when we nominate the champions, in my opinion, it's important to show that officially that they are doing that important job and they are like the pioneers there. So apart from the mugs or t-shirts or whatever, obviously uh, having the security conference, having uh, a opportunity to attend security conferences is one a big plus for them. Also in the chapter maintain interest, I included that uh, there should be internal trainings and workshops. And uh, internally, we are having our weekly meetings to see how things are going and to share some uh, information about it. And they're, of course, encouraged a lot to participate in bug search, so kind of internal uh, bug bounty as well as to apply for such conferences or sometimes even to present such as on local watch meetings or international conferences if they are willing to. Thank you, Alex. Um, and I'm sorry because uh, I was busy with the technical glitches uh, uh, in the beginning of your presentation. Um, so for, uh, how, how long is your experience with uh, managing uh, uh, security championship, actually. Yeah, so we started the program roughly a year ago and we had some challenges. So after a year now, I can say that it works. And uh, so we just felt that uh, there was an advancement that we wanted to share that and to hear the feedback from the others who also tried or, and achieved or did not achieve such results. So it's one year of the champion program here. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, what it is it, interesting for me, or my question is, uh, uh, so I understand that in the beginning uh, people are enthusiastic about uh, the security championship program. So um, yeah, it's like very energizing to be probably a security champion. But uh, then when the the boring times come. Uh, what keeps uh, the security champions uh, energized? Because uh, in my understanding, security champion is not only watching what's happening, but also tries to try tries to um, move others uh, and uh, be the active part of it. So, what makes, in your opinion, the champions? active for 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 a long time because uh, uh, yeah. they're, they're just ordinary developers uh, many times yeah. yeah so in my opinion it's more or less the same why the let's say so-called pure security people are interested because there are a lot of cool stuff which is happening and myself i'm quite fascinated by that so i think that it is important well, to maintain the interest, so to have everything what I described here, as well as to change their roles from time to time. So if you just have the champion who has to, let's say, view the tickets and uh, let's say, say, okay, this will be the security review and that's it. It's of course quite boring. It becomes part of the process, which is automatic and which is good, but it's not enough to keep uh, the champion enthusiastic. If though you have reviews of your security strategy and you introduce the new concepts and new challenges, like there was no threat models, and then you tell them what it is, you show why it is important, you definitely have to do that. So they're interested, and then you go one by one and you work together. That would be something new, and that would be one of the reasons why they wanted to become a champion in the first place. So I think that when you mix it with the new tasks, when you honestly try to give the uh, uh, good information about security and to demonstrate how it affects the life uh, right now and how one mistake, let's say, can have a disastrous effect showing some sometimes even simple proof of concept. I think this is what uh, keeps 
the people who were not necessarily pure security guys and who wanted to learn more motivated. So, yeah, I think that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it, it must be a challenge in my opinion. Uh, yeah, uh, of course. So probably we can add some parts on it if we agree. <laughs> Yeah, I would be definitely more than happy to consider and add some parts here. So that's why it's GitHub, <laughs> as I said. So yeah. Okay. Uh, my last question to audience, and then we leave you. Uh, okay. you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> guys, do you have uh, ideas uh, how to improve the playbook that you seen? Some suggestions. Yes. Hi, this is Tibor, and I think the I, I saw some uh, example for the knowledge sharing sessions, and for, for my experience, that should be like the center of this uh, whole. I I th I see it's the center of the idea, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it should be more like. Uh, brand it, it should be branded that uh, you share your knowledge not just not just be a part of the team but uh, like you then you're a faculty champion i will share my knowledge with you and uh, that's i think that's good that would be a good idea too like uh, mm -hmm. advertise yourself with that yeah i think it's... Some, some people may you know want want this security knowledge but they don't know where to start. Yeah, I think that's definitely a good idea, and thanks for for that. So I might not uh, say said it quite clear here, maybe because I'm a bit, a bit sick anyway. So yeah, we also say that, and if you take a look at the outcomes again, coming back to what is expected from the champions. So yeah, absolute majority of people said that yes, they are expected to share the knowledge, and it was more than anything else here. So um, I think the aspects of how exactly do you brand the program, they might vary, but uh, to have that element, to have that knowledge sharing and to promote it actively is really important. So again, you can use the quizzes, you can have the sessions will be weekly, you can have informal meetings or all that, it doesn't matter, but yes, the way on how do you share the knowledge and uh, how you as the central, central team organize that is something what will be crucial for this program to survive. So I might reward some things here and I will be happy if you can read the whole doc and then maybe suggest uh, some places where I could have more accent on that. So yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, Alex, thank you very much uh, uh -huh. for joining us and to, to be available even despite your sickness. Uh, unfortunately, and the, at the beginning, we couldn't uh, record uh, your voice. It wasn't recorded, so probably we will fix it with you uh -huh. later so that okay. we can have a healthy uh, recording. <laughs> Uh, online. Okay. Thank you, Alex, again very much. Yeah. And yeah, thank you for coming and for your questions and suggestions. I will be happy to stay in touch and talk further about it. Okay. Yep. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. bye.